Okay, we are talking from the book of Titus. If you could go there, that's part of the weak word. We have spoken from Thessalonians and 1 and 2 Timothy. Weak word was from Ty, it was from Titus. And uh, a few facets I just want you to write down and please bring this before the Lord. Chapter 1 verse 1, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to further the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness in the hope of eternal life which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time, and which now, at his appointed season, he has brought to light through the preaching entrusted to me by the command of God, our Savior. What an introduction. Hallelujah. Let's start. Paul, a servant of God, first of all, my brother, my sister, may God help you that you will be recognized in such a way. Not first of all, Peter, the engineer, or John, the medical doctor, or Susie, the teacher. But first of all, that people will be recognizing you as a servant of God. Amen. May God challenge us in that. Servant of God and an apostle. Apostle, um, in the original, that talks about the sent one. Picked and sent out for a specific purpose. Let's say, sent out for a specific purpose. That means wherever you go, there's purpose. You bring purpose in a situation. You are at a, perp uh, at a place for a purpose. You say, I'm at a place for a purpose. You're coming to pick a pay, not just for bread and milk. You come there with a purpose. God has a purpose for you to be there. Okay. I don't want you to be, we need not to be super spiritual, but there's a purpose for me to be here. Amen. Apostle of Jesus Christ to do what? To further the faith of God's elect. To further the faith. Me and you sent into the place so that people will believe more about God. Wherever you are sent into, wherever you work, wherever you study, wherever you relate, where you relax, so that at the end of the day, the people's faith will be growing and growing and growing. Now my brother, my sister, first of all, with the word of God we know, Romans 10 verse 17, faith comes from hearing, hearing from the word of God. Amen. Now in all of that I say, for you to get into the word so that you will have faith because faith you will have that's why people they say they are atheists i always tell them wow you have an amazing lot of faith because to believe that there is no god that is quite something everybody believes something some believe that there is no god now for that you need to forget about a lot of facts to have that kind of faith but my brother, you will have faith in something. There will be a faith coming from a certain word in your life. You will, because of circumstances that spoke to you, you will believe that you are a failure. You will believe that things are going to be too much for you. You will believe a lot of stuff based on some or other word. The question is, the word foundation for your faith, will it be this word? Or the word that the enemy, the word that fear, the word that despair, the word that negativity, the word that circumstances, the word that temptation will give you. That will determine what type of faith you will have. Everybody say type of faith. Type of faith. So you will have faith. Bottom line. But may you be challenged that it will come from the word of God. That it will come from the word of God. If it says, let me rather go there, yes. When you speak the word, it's not first of all because you believe it. You first hear the word, you have the word, you hear it, and then you believe it. So many times we will take scripture that we believe and we will confess it. My brother, my sister, if we can have the discipline to get into the word and if I believe it or not 
I will start to speak it, I will confess it until I believe it and then because I believe it, I will say it and I will speak it. But how must you get into the place of the right type of faith, the godly type of faith, the faith that is a gift from God? As Ephesians 2 verse 6 or 8, I think 8, says faith is a gift from God. But that doesn't mean a gift that falls in your lap, Boop. gift because this is the most awesome gift from God. And from this gift you draw the faith. There's enemy, there's flesh that can give you something, but it's not called a gift. Sometimes we take something precious, and that is the words from people. The word that somebody said over your life. You got something, but you feel valued. You feel that person really loves you. Or you feel rejected, and you take that word, and for some reason you keep it. Why is that word that somebody said, and it hurt you, why do you keep it so close to your heart? Why is that word precious? Why do you honor that word? What that person said about you or to you or what circumstances are saying to you or your failures are saying to you. Why is that word so precious that you keep it? Let it go. And let the word of God be precious. Let the word of God be precious. Hello, are you, are you with me? We are sent out so that people will grow in the God type of faith. The faith that God's word is the most precious above everything. And because that is your decision to choose that you will honor this word. Before you believe it, you will honor it. Hello? Before you believe it, you will honor it. I respect this as the word of God. I respect what God has said and therefore I will get into the place for me to believe because I respect it. Are you with me? So today as you walk from this place now choose to say I will honor this word above all other words. This will come the closest to my heart. This will be my focus because you, the one that you honor you focus on him. You know, when you speak to somebody and you are looking here, looking there, but you are speaking to this, but what type of honor? But you'll look at the one that you honor the most, to the one that you have really, have some respect, and not just some respect. Hello? So start to decide if I understand the word or not, if I understand how to believe it, if I understand God's heart through it or not, nothing. I make the decision through the Holy Spirit today that I choose to respect His Word. And because I respect it, therefore I will say what He is saying. And as I say it, I hear His Word and hearing of the Word will bring me to the place of believing His Word. And the gift of the Word will be seen through me and it is called faith. The Word seen through me is called faith. You will live by faith. The righteous live by faith. What? A certain type of faith. Where your righteousness is through Christ in the Word. And through that type of faith, you will be saved. Because the devil believes also. He knows everything about God. But that brings us to the second point. To further the faith of the elect and to further their knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness. To further their knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness. And this knowledge has to do with a relational knowledge. You know the president of America and you know your wife or your child or your mother or your father, but in two total different ways. Because there's the knowledge that is relational there's a knowledge from a relational point of view. The other one is about information. We can sit here and we can get a lot of information. Hello. There's a thousand times more information that the devil has about God than you and me. But he cannot have the knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness. 
and cannot have it. He doesn't have the relational knowledge where it's heart to heart intimacy with God. And if you are called, first of all, as a servant of God and a sent one, sent out one from God with a purpose, it is so that in our lives and through our lives, we will grow in our intimacy with God. That what I get through the word, it will draw me closer. God does not want to reveal his knowledge for you to have an understanding, to have more information about God. He wants to reveal and he wants to give you knowledge to, so that you can know how to come closer to him. That you will be drawn towards him. The more you know, the more you are drawn. When you come into the word and you are being drawn to God, then you know Holy Spirit revealed knowledge to you. If you get into the word and you are not drawn to God, it means you didn't receive knowledge from God. You read through some information about God. But only the Holy Spirit can give us the knowledge of the truth. Because when I get past the place of information, you go and sit and make your decision. I read the knowledge, but Holy Spirit open it up for me. Uh, that this is not just information, but that me and God in this word, there will be an interaction. Yeah. Only Holy Spirit can bring that. So that the knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness. So that in this interaction, truth will set me free into a place so that there's more of God in my emotions, more of God in my thinking, more of God in my relating, more of God in my dreams, more of God in my future. Godliness, that has what has eternal value. There will be more eternal value in tomorrow, in that where I live, because I allow Holy Spirit to take information and make it relational between me and God. Amen. And for that you are called, and other people are called into your life for that purpose, so that you can grow in your faith, so that your knowledge, your intimate knowing of God will be a place where truth will set you free. Because in the truth that you believe, Christ needs to be seen. Grow in the knowledge of the truth. Grow in the knowing of God in a place where God can be seen in your truth. But if I don't allow Holy Spirit to bring me in a place where I believe in this truth, where Christ is seen in it, something, somebody is going to be seen in the truth that you believe. So it either will be God, or it will be the devil, or it will be your flesh and yourself. But somebody is going to be seen in that what you believe, because Christ is called the truth. So in the knowledge of the truth, it's in the knowledge of who he is. I believe the truth until I see the truth in the truth. And that truth is called Jesus Christ. I work with Holy Spirit so that information more and more and more and more and more until the time I see God in that information. That when I believe the information in a relational way with God, it became the truth to set me free so that I can see the truth. Not set free just so that I can be set free. Not set free from rubbish so that I don't believe the rubbish anymore. Set free until I see the truth in the truth. Then you are set free. Then the truth really worked in you. Then the word really worked in you. The word became the truth in you when at the end of the day you can see the truth, Jesus Christ, in your situation. But the enemy also, if you can believe that lie, that you are rubbish, or you will never make it, or you are so stressed and you believe the word of that stress, at the end of the day, believing the lie, work with the lie, take the lie, put the lie on your lips, 
And in the end of the day, you will see the father of all lies in that what you believe. And then the enemy say, yes. But you are successful, if I can say like that, with the word and the Holy Spirit. When at the end of the day, in that what you, what you have, you will see the truth in that area. You work about from the finances. God, who are you about finances? What are you saying about finances? I bring my financial situation to you. But if I don't have a revelation of who he is, as my provider, uh, to whom are you speaking? If you don't know who he is as your provider, hello? Then he's some other ATM that you don't have a real relationship with, but you're standing by faith in front of the ATM for a, for a certain result, and you put in the credit card, we call it prayer. And you don't know why it's not throwing out because you don't have enough faith. No. Because you're supposed to speak, first of all, to God as your provider, not as your ATM. Amen. Allow God to be your provider. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in need. I shall not want. Because of who he is. Not because I have first seen, he first performed in a certain way, and I give him 10 out of 10, that... I shall not be in need because he has done the following. Now, just because he is, and I believe who he is, therefore I say, when I have you, I have everything. I will not lack because I have you. Amen, amen, amen. Are you with me? We need to grow, my brother, my sister, in our faith, in the truth. Until the truth is seen in the truth that you believe. But you believe the lie. You believe in that negativity. You are in that negativity. Oh, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And tomorrow, it's going to happen. We're not talking about this, this clickety-click trick style of stuff about whatever you speak. It's just exactly like that is going to happen. No, 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 no. But the principle stands. Some other spirit going to manifest in that what you believe. Finish. Finish. That's it. Let's, let it be the truth. You have an awesome gift to make sure that it is Christ the truth that manifests in your truth. When you do this word with the Holy Spirit. Truth that leads to godliness in the hope of eternal life. In the hope of eternal life. You do all of this in the context that you know eternity happens today. This is eternal life to know you and the one that you have sent, your son, Jesus Christ. John 17, 3. You must know that of heart now. Hey. So in that place, all of this in the knowing of the word, in the faith, it has to do from, it happens from a place of hope. Like we say, this is a year word where we believe God wants to give the nations hope. It's a year where hope needs to be established in the nations, where the church must bring hope in nations. We see that more and more and more. From a place, we can say whatever, COVID is gone. But the effect of so many people that's out there, crashed in, in many relationships, crashed in, in a lot of businesses, in a lot of stuff that, yeah, that happened. May they rise with hope. May they rise with hope. So there's millions of people that need to rise now. But before they could rise, we find this whole thing with Russia and Ukraine and whatever is around that. To be shaken to say, in what will you put your trust? Where will you find your hope? Where will you find your hope? Not in your medical fund or your hospital, not, not in your political field, not in all your skill right? and the, the army that you have, in nothing except in Christ. May the church bring the message, may the church bring the message and be sent into that place. Amen. In the hope of eternal life, because faith is the substance of the things that you hope for. 
So you choose Christ, your hope. I choose Christ, my hope. I choose Christ in this word as my hope. And because I have hope from that place of hope, I get into this, I speak the hope that is there. Because I choose that He will be my hope through the Holy Spirit. And then more and more from hope, I can start to act by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. But for hope to go into faith is that I get into Christ my hope. Get into hope. If you believe it or not, if you feel it or not, you jump into hope. And the more you jump into that and talk it and speak it and hear it, faith by hearing, hearing from the hope, the word of God, you will know how to act. You will know and you will believe the right things. Because people even would commit suicide because of the things that they believe. Because they have a certain type of faith, they will commit suicide. Not because they have no faith, but their faith, they believe there's no reason for living anymore. They believe certain things and receive in what they believe. You must bring a certain type of faith out there. Amen. Amen. Okay, we are there. All of this, what God promised before the beginning of time, in which now at his appointed season, he has brought to light through the preaching entrusted to me. He has brought it to light. Light needs to be brought. Why will there be darkness? Because the man that must preach through his lifestyle and his, the words from his mouth is not bringing the light, you and me. At the appointed season, he has brought it to light through, 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 through the preaching, through your life, through the message that you bring. That place is brought to light through your presence in your preaching. The presence of your preaching. Here I come into the situation, but what I preach is all oh, the challenges, just all the challenges and all the stress and all the fear and all the that and all the that. And it will bring a certain light. No. It will bring more darkness, more darkness, more darkness. But it's the season, it's the season for the light. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you because God's beauty has risen upon you. Arise and shine. But if the church cannot arise in the nation, arise in Bluefontein, arise in your circumstance, arise in your circumstance above your finances and shine. For His beauty is upon you. His hand is upon you. His grace, His love, His peace, His, His mercy is upon you. His glory is upon you. Therefore, arise above your situation. Amen? Let the people see who is your God. You are called to show Him to the world out there. Amen. You with me? Oh, what should I say? When you speak, when you live further the faith, let it grow in the people. Knowledge of truth that leads to godliness, we said, and bring light to God's promises. That what God promises, what God promised in the right season, it was brought to light. When something is promised, something is promised when you don't see it yet. Hello? Are uh, you with me? But the promise is for something that's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow, it's not here now. But it's tomorrow. But that what was promised there, you come as truth to say, God didn't lie. What God said is the truth. So you come to the knowledge of the truth. You will bring the truth that God did not lie yesterday when he promised this and this and this and this. So you bring light 
into the place of darkness over a soul, darkness over emotions, darkness in the context of, uh, what's the word, not just depression, but discouragement. In that place you bring oh, breath, you bring encouragement, you bring, I can see. Are you with me? But you see, to understand the knowledge, my brother, it's not about logic. It's not about logic. I come to the knowledge of the truth. I come to understand. What does that mean? It doesn't mean I understand what's happening. I understand that he understands. And I come into his understanding of things. But when I hear how he sees the things, my flesh and my mind could maybe still not understand. And that's okay. That's where faith comes in. We see the word says, we have the mind of Christ. Amen? Yeah. And amplified that says, we have the mind of Christ. We do hold the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of God in our spirit. We, you have God's logic in you. Let's say that. I have the logic of God. His logical thinking is in my spirit, but now it's the, the clashing with the logic of my soul. That's the problem. But God's kind of reasoning, God's purposes, God's logic is in your spirit. It's there. But if the knowledge, if I must come to the knowledge, and that means the understanding of me understanding the logic of why he would say that. You will never do that. You will never do Jericho. You will never cross in that way. Uh, look at all the examples in the word, hey. The logic of going against Goliath with just that slinger file. What is a slinger file? Slingshot. Something like that, hey. <laughs> Something like that, I say. Okay, so what are we saying? It's, it's ridiculous, man. That's not the way. But I have a knowledge about the greatness of my God. And you can come with your logical of how it's supposed to work, Mr. Goliath, with all your armor and all your this, and in the logical way, it's actually really logic. Uh, are you with me? You come with your logic, I come with His logic. I come in the name of the Lord. I come with the greatness of God. But my brother, my sister, then he had it because of his experience with God in the past. This is what God has done in me. This is with a, with a small situation with a stinking sheep where I so loved the sheep that I gave my life for the sheep. No, 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 no. Because I want to be faithful to my father. Because I respect him. And he said, you tend the sheep. So to be faithful, I will stand with my life. Hello? Against the bear, against the wolf, against the lion coming against the sheep. No, I will stand. I will stand. Because I will be faithful. And in that place he came to knew who his God is. And what his God can do. So as you live today faithful in the small, tomorrow you can face the giant and think, who are you? Who are you? How dare you come against God's people? But that, you cannot do that if you're not willing to give everything when tending, when looking after the sheep, when watching the sheep. Are you with me? Uh, hello. Yeah. So may God help you, my brother, my sister, that our own logic will not stand in the way of God's logic. And that you will not seek the truth to understand the logic of what God is doing. But that you will surrender to his logic. This is the way that he sees it. I don't understand how he can see it like that. But that's the way that he sees it. Are you with me? Okay.
we leave that there. Now in this in this uh, book of Titus, Paul tells his men what he needs to do, how he needs to disciple them, how to put in order a lot of stuff in what he says, how to teach them, how to encourage them, how to rebuke them. A lot of times he talks about that in one in one verse verse 13 one chapter 1 verse 13 therefore rebuke them sharply so that they will be sound in the faith other translations talk about that they will become healthy that they will become healthy in their faith because your faith can make you sick because when you when you have that negative feeling the more you start to speak that negative feeling, the more you start to believe it, and your faith is making you sick. Hello? But your faith needs to be healthy, but that can only be when the Word heals you. He sent out His Word and He healed you. He healed your soul, He healed your emotions, He healed your intellect. It's not just physical healing. Yes, let it be so in Jesus' name. But there's a healing in His Word so that your faith can be healthy that so that you can have a healthy faith not just healed by faith but healthy faith for today today there's a health in you in your soul and that is the faith if your faith is based really on the word of god everybody say healthy faith healthy. let it be so in jesus name but you know rebuke them sharply sharply it's not just, hey, that's very sharp, nice. Man, they had this recording that they did in uh, Maranata Studios long ago, 25 years ago. And this guy told us they had this family that were, they were recording and the guy, they had the sound desk say, eh, uh, to the guy, it's a little bit, it's a little bit sharp. And the little boy just, just told him, oh, thank you very much. Yes, yes, thank you. But that's not what he meant. <laughs> It was too high the pitch, but uh, for whatever reason I said that. Okay. Goeie genachtig. So, okay, that was not so sharp. But in any case, you know, when you, when you would give your, yourself to the doctor, hopefully when they would cut, hopefully it will be very sharp, the, the knife, the spatel. What was Dyden? Dyden. That it will be hopefully very sharp. The word needs to be very sharp. When you disciple somebody, it's not to take that thing and kill the person with it, but it's to open up something so that the rubbish can come out. Hello. And you know, but when somebody would come and there's a sharp rebuking, oh, whoa, whoa, when last did you experience that in your life? Ay, 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 a sharp rebuking. If there's never a sharp rebuking, then there's really not something wrong in your faith. You're basically 99% holy. No, no discipleship needed. But in that sharp rebuking, I need to understand, oh, you know, I cannot trust the doctor. I cannot, because that thing will be very sharp that he will open up to get the wound out, get the rubbish out and clean up a wound. No, 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 I cannot trust. It will be too sharp. Who will think like that? Now, if you can give yourself to the doctor for him to do this operation, you will even go in uh, uh, narcosis. What's that, don't you know? Narcotics. Narcotics. Yeah. That you will... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, my yellow with babies, yo. <laughs> okay. You know when they, when they put it over you and you're going to sleep? You know? Okay. Then you what? You are given over to whatever the doctor is going to do. You are not even in control. You cannot even watch him while he's doing... He can put rubbish in your body, man. What can that man do, that doctor? You have the faith. But with God, why do we want to understand every move? Why must you understand every move of God, what, what you will allow him to do? 
Okay, doctor, the next phase, you're going to cut now. Okay, do that, let me see. And then we decide about the next move. If I agree. We will not say that like that to God, but let's respect Him in the way that He wants to interact with us. But if we have an issue with this, then we can only see Him as a doctor. And in our prayer life, we only come with a problem. As if God is only the doctor. He, tomorrow He could manifest Himself as the doctor in your life, where there's a sharp rebuking so that the rabbis can be dealt with. The thing that can make you so sick that you could die. Die from the destiny on earth. No, 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 no. But also sometimes then he just wants to be a father and sit with you and share his heart with you. Sometimes Jesus wants to be the bridegroom and just have this intimate time with you. But other times he wants to be the king just telling you, do this if you understand it or not. Obey me. Other times he wants to be the shepherd to lay you down in green pastures or to lead you to be beside the still waters. Hello? To guide you through the valley of death. Hello? Let him manifest himself how he wants to manifest himself in your life. Don't put him in a box of how you understand him according to your logic of how God will work and how he will not work. That he wants to manifest himself in all those different facets. But when there's, there's a scripture like a sharp rebuking, it's a doctor that is concerned about your health and the healthiness, if I can say like that, about your faith, of your faith. That your faith will not make you sick. Because many times when people need encouragement, is they still have faith, but their faith is not healthy. The, through the, the word of God, their faith was not made healthy. Because they believe all these stuff going to happen. All these negative stuff in any case is going to happen. They believe when I come close to some people, they in any case just going to hurt me again. Hello? Start to get the word in your life. But in sharp rebuking, let people walk into your life. Afrikaans, uh, we said, "Das mensen wat diep sporen in jou leven trap." Any English saying for that? People walking, making an impression on your life. Yeah, making a deep impression. Mm. So they are, but they, you can say they are walking over you, or they are walking into your life. But when we get hurt, and there's not one person in this place that never got hurt in relationships or disappointed. But still God wants people to walk into your life. Deep into your life, people are supposed to walk. And if you don't allow people, godly people, to do that, then the enemy will walk in. He will not knock. He will not knock. He will just get in somehow. But I need to choose godly people to walk into my life. But then what do we do in the past? Never again. It must be people without mistakes. <laughs> but God sometimes is going to give you people. And there's not one person where you will not at some or other stage have to give him grace, forgiveness, and pray for him in spite of. And love him in, or, her, or her in spite of. Why? It's called opportunity. Are you with me? If Titan is into my life, but, but ah, he can frustrate me or irritate me. Not really, but, but let, I'm just using you because you never do that. Uh, okay, so Titan. What is God doing? Titan is an opportunity to sow forgiveness and grace in my life. How? The word says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength, everything. And then love your neighbor as you love yourself. But it starts, you cannot love yourself because you must love yourself with God type of love. So for that I must see that he loves me and I must receive his love. To love him back with that love and with that love, I cannot love you if I don't love myself. 
You, I cannot forgive you if I don't forgive myself. Hello. I must first of all see God's forgiveness, take God's forgiveness, let it be over my life. Why? Because I respect God's forgiveness. I respect the blood. Because I don't deserve 1% of his forgiveness. But I take it because I respect the blood of Christ. And then in the way that I hear, understand forgiveness, I can give it. Are you with me? So many times God will put somebody in front of me that I need to forgive. Opportunity to sow, to sow, sow in the context to receive. But in that sowing, it's so that I can deal with the, with the, the thing here where also I must forgive myself. Are you with me? Are you with me? So to even forgive myself, God put that person in front of me. But you will always have struggle with somebody or some people to forgive. But it's because you are not forgiving yourself. You're putting yourself in a performance. I always feel I must perform in front of Leander. And I, you know, everything must just be right because tomorrow something's going to be wrong and he's going to tune me. Well, why that thing? Because somewhere forgiveness from God to me and forgiving myself through the blood hasn't worked yet. In some areas, maybe. But it, if it worked, I will not be in performance towards Leander. Are you with me? May God help you, may God help me. But for that, a deep, deep, even a rebuking. And the rebuking is not, yeah, I'm so excited. We're going to have an, I'm going to have an operation tomorrow, you know? And uh, the day after that, I'm healthy. And I say, oh, I wish I could have operation again. <laughs> Who will think about that? Right. So in the rebuking, yes, the word brings a rebuking. But the word also wants you to flourish, to grow, to enjoy. I love your word. I find my delights in your word, David says. Amen. So may, you, may God open that up for you, my brother. I'm going to end off with chapter 2. Let's say verse 9. Teach the slaves, and you won't believe it, we are all slaves of something. Let it be a slave of Christ. That means the one that you give yourself to, that he will have full control over you. Rebellion is where I will not receive that slavery because there is slavery as a curse and there is a slave where that's an honor and a privilege. It's an honor and a privilege to be a slave of Christ. That means where the word controls me, the word of God, where God controls me, his love controls me, his peace controls me, his joy controls me, his purposes control me, his dream controls me, his passion controls me. Hello. But if I will not allow him and his word to control me, something automatically, something else will control you. And you will be a slave of that thing. Are you with me? Hello. Teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything. Why? Whoa. To try to please them. Hmm. It's all about you doing as if unto the Lord. Not to talk back to them and not to steal from them, but to show that they can be fully trusted. So, for what? So that in every way, they will make the teaching about God, our Savior, attractive. Amazing. Amazing. In the way that you will serve even ungodly masters. In the way that you will give yourself without moaning and groaning. Feel that but they walk over you. You are like a slave and they are walking over you. Get sorted out with God. And see it as an honor and a privilege that the word says, don't, don't get out of that place. Don't get out of that place. But be a very good slave. Just be a very good slave. So that through the way you deal with your life as a slave, you will make the gospel attractive. 
how you are a slave of Christ, it must make the gospel attractive, that people are drawn to you and say, why? Why? Why, why like this? Where do you find this peace in the midst of the storm? Where do you find this joy in the midst of this negativity? Where do you find this love? Come, don't come with your love again, you know? That you will irritate the flesh in others. You will irritate your own flesh also, yes. Now don't go and condemn others, but I'm saying, may your love, may your joy, may your character, may the hope in you, the way you see life and your future, and their future, may it irritate their flesh, but be attractive for their spirit, for the genuine who they really are, the people around you. Are you with me? Now the word says, for some you will be a, a, a aroma, a very awesome fragrance, but for others you will be a stench, a stench. Not smelling bad, a stench. So it's also okay. Don't go so that in a place where everybody must love you very intensely. But walk with integrity before the Lord and allow Holy Spirit and allow others to walk into your life and make sure that sometime there is some sharp rebuking because God's word is sharp. Hello. Two-edged sword. The word of God. So there must be some intense, sharp, accurate dealing with stuff in my life. If I allow the word two-edged so, don't be afraid of the word with the Spirit. Amen. But know that the people that you allow, don't you sit on the throne and expect them to be perfect. Now before the time, they will make mistakes. And God will send certain people that will make certain mistakes. He knows what mistakes they're going to make. He knows. But He has faith that you will be able to have the capacity to deal with it in a right way. Even though we can get hurt, we can be disappointed. You have the awesome opportunity to sow grace and sow forgiveness and show the heart of God. So that in what you sow, you will reap 30, 60, 100 fold, even for, from others. Let's say, I have this relationship, but with this David, I want to slaughter him. I mean, not you, but David. And I, and I must forgive, and I must forgive, and I must give grace, and I must give grace, and I must, oh, and in the process I become more like Christ. Amen. But in the sowing, where do I reap it? You know, maybe your grandchild could maybe make a hell of a mess of his life. But for some reason, Grandpa, has sown so many times grace, forgiveness, love, long-suffering, patience. And in the third generation, there is just this overflow of grace. There's just this people around your grandchild, loving him, giving him grace, walking in the road, being patient with him, forgiving him. Why? It's part of a 30, 60, 100-fold harvest of incorruptible seed that you have sown, that there's a generational blessing. Are you with me? God is not, cannot be mocked. What you sow, you will reap. What you will reap from the word, what you will sow through the word, you will reap that what has eternal value, even for generations. Let that be so. May that be so in Jesus' name. Make the teaching about God, our Savior, make it attractive. That means that people are drawn into it, that they are attracted to it. They are arrested by God's love, arrested by His beauty, arrested by, by His grace, His, His peace. Amen. Through your life. Who are you? Slave. Teach the slaves to be subject to their masters. The only time you really get into rebellion is in rebellion against your flesh and the fears and the temptations not to be your masters. But let 
the fear not be your master. Let the, let the struggle, the stress, the anxiety, the whatever, let that not be your master. With that, you better stand against it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And say, I will be a slave and my master. I belong to Christ. The slave that belonged to a certain master, the other person cannot steal that slave if he fears the master. If he has respect for that slave's master, he will not touch the slave because he know the testimony of the master. I'm talking in the physical, in the past. Are you with me? And so, hell cannot touch you because they fear your master. And when you serve where you are, because you stand as a slave of the master of the universe, hell cannot touch you. Hell cannot destroy your destiny on earth. Amen. Oh, my brother, my sister, let's walk with this, please. Let's walk with this and let's take, take the word. The whole book in Titus talking with the rebuking, remind them, warn them, av avoid this talking, teach them. Hello? They need to know to do the following. Let's just read this one verse, the last verse, 14 of chapter 3. Our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good. So that they do not live unproductive lives. Unproductive lives. Because they didn't learn how to do good. You learn not to have a lot of knowledge, not to have a lot of information. You learn how to do good. Remember Matthew 28? All authority given to me, therefore, go make disciples, teach Make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey. Not teach them to know a lot, but teach them to obey. But just teach them that is information and knowledge puffs up. It brings you in a place of pride where you will be less and less and less dependent on God. But in the context of relationship, first make disciples and teach the disciple. But if I'm not willing to be disciple, if I'm not willing that a certain pattern of life be put in my life, then teaching is going to be very dangerous. Teaching is going to be a curse. It's going to bring me in the place where I'm puffed up, where I'm full of pride. But I'm protected if I take teaching from the Word in the context of discipleship. Make disciples, let them identify with me and every, let everybody know they, they are with me. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then teach them, teach the disciples. Sitting here, but I'm not open. Having time with the word tomorrow, but I'm not open for the discipleship, for the changing, so that God's patterns for life be put and that my soul be aligned according to the patterns. If that is not the heart, Teaching is very, very, very dangerous. But you take the discipleship because there's a loving father who disciples, who discipline every child that he accepts. Every child, every man and woman that he respects, that he honors as his own child. Because he has such a passion for them, such a love for them. There will be a discipleship. There will be discipline. Amen. God, come and set us free. We trust you for that, Lord. Oh, God, so that we can become healthy in our faith. God, help us to deal with that, what is wrong. God, even every man, every woman in this place that really got hurt in relationships, disappointed, come and touch them through your blood. But God, first of all, that they will forgive themselves for that what was wrong. And that they will stand in the honor, in the privilege, in the opportunity to forgive others. To sow forgiveness through the blood of Christ. To sow forgiveness and grace and mercy through the blood of Christ. And as you said, Lord, you will not be mocked. 
what we sow we will reap so that in us and through us and all generations to come there will be a hundredfold mercy grace forgiveness given we trust you for that even for children grandchildren lord and through our lives to others let it be so in jesus name lord and i pray that you will help us to make your word attractive that through our lifestyles and our mistakes and weaknesses god people will not be we will not be a stumbling block a stumbling block against the word of god but god that we will people will be drawn to you as we choose to arise and shine because of your beauty your grace your forgiveness your love over our lives thank you for that opportunity